Hi everyone. I want to spend the next few minutes reflecting on a really positive comment that I was given a few weeks ago. When I got over the pool, the time slot after me was for Aquafit. A gentleman had seen me using the swimming pool throughout this past winter for my physiotherapy and he wanted to encourage me. The encouragement he gave to me was when I see you my aches and pains go away. And this is quite a really pleasant encouragement. I can obviously see he has physical limits. He's able to walk but would rely on a scooter for any distance such as outside the home. It got me thinking a whole lot about being grateful for life and what I can do. It's extremely obvious if you saw me in real life the physical limits I'm having and the challenges that I experience on account of pain. I am, however, committed to making the most out of life and trying my best to overcome what obstacles I have. I want to spend just two to three minutes talking about overcoming the obstacles I have in the hopes that it would help people who are especially struggling right now. Why I bring this up is that I've now had five orthopedic surgeries since 2007. None of the surgeries have really brought the expected results and allowed me to heal and recover like what was expected. So following each of these surgeries I've needed to learn systems to manage my life and how I will do my day-to-day -day living. What I want to share with you is how I've managed it and it comes down to usually making a list of pros and cons to figure out what the lesser of all evils is and then trusting that decision once it's made. That isn't to say I'm not willing to revisit decisions but using it as a starting point and then if and then maybe reevaluating it in two weeks for example. When I've had each of my surgeries I've needed to relearn how to function in day-to-day -day life. It's a very interesting experience going into a big box store after not going in and shopping in one for six to eight months. I understand people who feel overwhelmed by being in public. The first time I went out shopping following my 2007 surgery. It was a complete shock being around, you know, 100 people or 150 people all at once. So I appreciate those who are struggling. What becomes important when you're healing from a surgery is being able to prioritize what's important for functioning in day-to-day -day life. That is sleep, good nutrition, and some type of interaction with other people. Thankfully, we live in a day and age where the internet makes this possible, and especially when there's trouble sleeping, you can spend time visiting people who are in other parts of the world. So if you're up at 2 a.m., there's people in the world who are having their dinner or reclining after supper 
and are able to visit with them. It does take a commitment to have relationships where you can begin to share your struggles. It's not natural to walk up to someone and just dump on them. There are times when it happens, but relationships and doing life together takes time to build a trust level that you can go back to the person when you're struggling for advice or at a minimum a listening ear. You know I've watched the TV shows that talk about hoarding and I actually understand and empathize with someone who has a medical condition that's led to the host being, for lack of a better term, a wasteland or where trash is stored. I get it that it's easy to shut down. If you're feeling yourself shutting down, I encourage you to have a good heart-to-heart -heart conversation with a friend and then making an appointment with your family doctor even bringing your friend along for moral support and starting to build a strategy to manage your day-to-day -day life. When I've had each of my surgeries, I've become very weak and all but one of these operations made me very weak for several weeks and then I had to deal with the disappointment of the surgeries not bringing the expected results and trying to figure out what now to managing my day-to-day -day life. And when I found myself in the what now situation, I've started over by rebuilding my life by the blocks, sort of one block being time for sleep and then meals then worked in personal hygiene, friendship time, household chores, and downtime. And it's worked out fairly well, I might say, because during this, I wasn't ready for all the blocks because of being weak from having surgery and needing extra time for my body to rest. It is important that you acknowledge when you're in over your head and work out strategies to figure out what the best plan is. You aren't meant to do life alone. There are very caring social workers available and your family doctor would be aware of what community resources are available to help give you a support to get you through an especially difficult situation. You know, when I was my weakest from surgery, I had already planned ahead by cooking and freezing meals. If you're by chance in that situation now, the next best option that I can think of is buying pre-cooked meals that they only need to be warmed up, whether it's from the grocery store or it's from a home meal delivery program. Both options work quite well. When you have the nourishment in your body, it helps you function the best that's possible and then it's just a commitment to persevere it's okay if you need to have a day for downtime you know when you're healing from surgery healing in itself becomes a full-time job having an operation kicks the snot out of you it just leaves you depleted and it takes time to bounce back, especially when the physiotherapy can easily make you weak. 
I've had my various neighbors offer to do things like grocery shop for me if that's what I need help with. So for this to work, it means I need to be able to speak up and have cash on hand to pay for whatever groceries that I'm needing. I say this to tell you that if you're just at the point where you're trying to figure out what now, neighbors, I find, especially when you've had casual hellos, might be willing to help with the first task. Because once you've figured out how to do the first thing, it gets easier to work out what else you need to work through, such as house cleaning and personal hygiene. I love the internet. You know, I love that I'm able to connect with people who have had the same hip disease as myself. It's wonderful being able to talk to other adults who are going through and logistically understand what's happening in life. And that's another source of support. And when someone relates to what you're going through, it tends to bring effective advice and suggestions to managing the situation that you're in because someone would understand what it means when you say I can't walk today or I can barely make it to the toilet they would also be trying to in their mind put them into the situation you're in and how that they would respond so whatever advice is given is hopefully helpful to you. So online support is a safety net that we can turn to in our day and age. It doesn't replace friendships locally and relationships locally, but it's one of the areas that besides your family doctor that you can turn to as you work through what life's going to look like and have the support while you do life together. So I think I've reached the point where I've given you what you can chew on for a while. Again, I want to thank you for the time that you've spent with me. I do hope you'll find this to be helpful and motivate you to keep pressing forward in whatever situation that you found yourself in. Thanks for this time together. Bye for now.